Regular physical activity has been seen to increase your life expectancy by up to 7 years. People who exercise regularly have lower rates of all chronic diseases such as heart disease, Alzheimer's, diabetes and cancer. However, there's a common thought that athletes live shorter than regular people who don't exercise because excess training is going to shorten their lifespan. The truth is it's very context dependent and also sport specific. Not all sports have the same effects. A recent observational study on 95,000 people from 183 countries over the last century and a half looked at which sports athletes live the longest and which ones the shortest. So in this video I'm going to look at how long do athletes from different sports live and which sport yields the greatest life expectancy and which one the shortest. First, let's address the idea that athletes live shorter because they're training so hard. Is it true? Exercise in the general population is consistently associated with longer life and a reduced risk of all chronic diseases. Exercise also slows down the physical aging of the body. But of course, the general population might only exercise a few times a week at a moderate intensity, whereas athletes might exercise every day and even twice a day. When it comes to life expectancy, then this 2021 study looked at 1800 former US Olympians between 1912 and 2012. They found that Olympic athletes lived on average five years longer than the general population. Both male Olympians and female Olympians lived longer than their counterparts in the general population. Male Olympians live 20% longer than normal men as shown by the blue solid line in the graph compared to the blue dotted line. And female Olympians live 13% longer than normal women as shown by the green solid line compared to the green dotted line. However, even normal women lived longer than Olympian men as shown by the green dotted line being further away from the solid blue line. Based on this data, men would benefit significantly more from exercise than women, as a woman who isn't an athlete would still live longer than a male athlete. Being an unathletic male results in the shortest lifespan, and being an athletic female results in the longest lifespan based on this study. So it's generally not true that athletes live shorter than the general population. It might be actually the opposite. Athletes live up to five years longer. In this study on Olympians who are the most elite athletes in the world, the increased life expectancy was the result of lower rates of cardiovascular disease and cancer, which are the leading causes of death in the general population. Of course, there are many confounding variables that could explain these results, such as socioeconomic status. Olympians probably are slightly wealthier than the general population, which typically results in longer life expectancy. However, US Olympians get paid very little compared to other nations. For example, US Olympians get paid only $37,500 for a gold medal, $22,500 for a silver medal, and $15,000 for a bronze medal. Compare that to Kazakhstan, where a gold medal earns you $2,500,000, silver $150,000, and bronze $75,000. If you win a gold medal as an Olympian in the United States, you get only $37,500, which is not a small amount of money, but given the fact that the Olympics happen only every four years, is not a lot. And $37,000 is not that much to live a luxurious life, especially if you live in the United States. Now let's take a look at the study looking at the life expectancy of athletes in different sports. They tracked athletes born between 1862 and 2002, and they compared their age of death to the corresponding reference population while accounting for variables such as sex, year of death, and the country. The results show that sports generally is linked to greater life expectancy, especially among males. And males are more likely to gain benefits from sports than females. Females. This coincides with the previous study I mentioned on the Olympians from the United States. Here are the top 10 sports associated with the longest life expectancy compared to the general population in male athletes. Number 1. Pole vaulting plus 8.4 years. 2. Gymnastics plus 8.2 years. 3. Fencing plus 6.6 .6 years. 4. Targeting sports plus 6.2 years. Number 5 to number 8. Racket sports, mixed track and field, race walking and cricket plus 5.7 years. Number 9. Sprinting plus 5.3 years. And number 10. Decathlon and pentathlon plus 5.2 years. There were only 8 sports that were associated with shorter life expectancy than the general population and they were number 1 sumo minus 9.8 years, 2 volleyball minus 5.4 years, 3 mountaineering minus 3.8 years, 4 martial arts minus 2.5 years, 
5. Handball, minus 2.2 years. 6. Stick sports on ice like hockey, minus 0.8 years. 7. Boxing, minus 0.6 years. And 8. Bobsledding, minus 0.3 years. Everything above those 8 switched back into longer life expectancy than the general population. So the lowest improvements in life expectancy were observed with wrestling and football, plus 0.5 years for both. You can see from the rest of the table a particular sport and its effects on life expectancy. The right side across the line is favorable and the left side is unfavorable. As you can see, most sports, except for the bottom eight, were seen to be associated with longer life expectancy compared to the general population. What about female athletes? The top five sports associated with longer life expectancy in women were number one, golf, plus 3.2 years, two, racket sports, plus 2.8 years, three, diving, plus 0.9 years, four, fencing, plus 0.7 years, and five, skating, plus 0.6 years. Every other sport was associated with shorter life expectancy. The worst sports for female life expectancy were number one, basketball, minus 6.2 years, two, table tennis, minus 4.8 years, three, cricket, minus 4.2 years, four, track and field, minus 2.4 years, and five, sprinting, minus 2.1 year. One big limiting factor with the results from the analysis on female athletes is their smaller sample sizes. That's why a lot of other sports were excluded because they didn't have enough female representatives. So the results from female athletes might be more limited than the results from male athletes. Now these findings are quite interesting. Again, this is an observational study and there are a lot of confounding variables that influence the outcomes. But we can still play around with it and think about the results. To play the devil's advocate, there are some things that make perfect sense, such as sumo wrestling being associated with up to 10 years shorter life expectancy. Everyone can already guess why it's the case. Sumo wrestlers are morbidly obese. Yes, they're big and strong, but they're still obese. Sumo wrestlers wrestlers have been seen to have a substantially higher mortality rate between the ages of 35 to 74, and it's higher the more overweight they are. Mountaineers, boxers, and mixed martial artists also have a more dangerous sport which makes sense why their life expectancy is shorter. Volleyball being associated with minus 5.4 years is surprising. If it was beach volleyball, you might think it's because of a higher risk of skin cancer, but the authors of the paper hypothesized it's because of the physical trauma volleyball players experience when playing indoors and jumping up and down a lot. That could also explain why handball was seen to shorten lifespan by minus 2.2 years. However, basketball wasn't. It increased lifespan by 1.4 years in males, but it shortened lifespan in females by up to six years. Gymnastics and pole vaulting being linked to up to eight years longer life expectancy in males also makes sense, mostly because these sports require you to have a lower body weight. The average weight of a male gymnast is around 60 to 70 kilograms, or 132 to 154 pounds, whereas a female gymnast is between 45 to 60 kilograms, or 100 to 132 pounds. They're obviously strong and muscular, but they're not massive. Their low body weight is also the result of being very low body fat. They have plenty of muscle, relatively speaking, but they weigh so little because of their low body fat. The only caveat is that gymnastics was linked to longer life expectancy only in males, and in females it was linked to minus 1.2 years. This might be because low body weight and low body fat is more harmful to females than it is to males. For example, when it comes to body fat percentage, then for men, the leaner you are, the lower your risk of mortality and heart disease. Anything below 15% is better than anything above 15%. However, women being below 20% body fat is associated with higher mortality, and the optimal body fat range is between 20 to 35%. So, unless you're morbidly obese, then the body fat percentage for females matters much less than it matters for males. Pole vaulters are also lean and with lower body weight. Their average male weight is around 74 kilograms or 163 pounds, and female weight is 59 kilograms or 130 pounds. The big difference between pole vaulters and gymnasts is their height. Pole vaulters are often over 6 feet tall or over 182 centimeters. Pole vaulters also pack less muscle than gymnasts, but they're definitely lean. Competitive gymnasts are also much shorter than the average person because it's much easier for them to do their tricks and routines. This could also have some benefits for longevity. It's a common phenomenon in humans that shorter people live longer. In this study looking at the height and average age of death of baseball players over the 20th century, they found that shorter players, 162 to 170 centimeters, lived up to 10 years longer than the players who were over 188 centimeters. In the beginning of the 20th century until 1975, the average age of death was 10 years lower for people of all heights, but the same pattern persisted between 19 
1976 to 1992. So for male gymnasts, you could definitely see that being shorter and having lower body weight and lower body fat percentage has favorable effects on longevity. And male gymnasts also have muscle and enough muscle strength, which is the perfect combo. You want to have lower body weight and higher muscle and strength as a male. The second thing that affects life expectancy is socioeconomic status. People with higher socioeconomic status typically have a higher life expectancy. So the question is, are gymnasts and pole vaulters earning more than other athletes. Aside from the social media star athletes, then gymnasts aren't getting paid a lot. An average salary of a top gymnast is $55,000 per year in the USA and $38,000 per year for an average gymnast. The top sumo wrestlers, on the other hand, earn up to $120,000 per year. And in the USA, the average sumo wrestler's salary is $64,000 per year. So sumo wrestlers make more money than gymnasts but they live 20 years shorter than the gymnasts. So on the extremes, having more money doesn't prevent you from dying, especially if you're overweight. The highest paying sports in general are basketball, soccer, American football, golf, and boxing, which weren't the top performing sports for life expectancy among males. Basketball and soccer players get paid enormous amounts of money on the elite level. Boxing was actually associated with shorter life expectancy, which isn't surprising. All contact sports can increase the risk of neurodegeneration later in life because of the head trauma. And remember how much money does a US Olympian earn if they win a gold medal? It's not a lot. And only so few people can win the gold medal in the first place. Unless you're at the upper echelon of your sport, you're not really getting paid that much money to reasonably influence your life expectancy by virtue of your socioeconomic status. Athletes might get more attention from medical professionals, but not after they retire. And most athletes retire in their 40s, which gives them another 30 to 40 years on average to live a regular life. Overall, I think that this study is interesting and you can get some insights from this. But I wouldn't hang your hat on this because it's an observational study and there are many confounding variables, obviously. You can just take a few key insights from this study. I think it's reasonable to presume that sumo wrestlers, boxers, mixed martial artists and mountaineers live shorter than average people because of the danger and unhealthiness of their sport. When it comes to volleyball, then I could also see the possibility that just pounding your knees on the ground for several years will eventually wear out your joints. And this is going to shorten your tail span, which makes it harder for you to keep exercising later in life because of the pain and limitations. Gymnasts, on the other hand, are doing all their flips and jumps on the soft floor, which bounces so their joints are never compromised. For men, at least, it looks like the body composition and athleticism are the best for living a long life. You don't want to be overweight and you don't want to sacrifice athleticism. The best sports for life expectancy for men were the most athletic ones. Track and field, fencing, gymnastics, pole vaulting, sprinting, decathlon, diving, running, jumping, skiing, etc. For women, the conclusions are a bit more limited because the number of female athletes was limited for a lot of the sports. It's reasonable to think that being athletic is also more beneficial to women, but men and women often see very different outcomes when it comes to sports. What's the final conclusion? Sports, even at the professional level, is generally associated with longer life expectancy than the general population. There are some sports that shorten lifespan, such as being a sumo wrestler, boxing and mountaineering, but being more athletic and with good body composition is associated with longer lifespan, especially for men. Check out my new book, The Longevity Leap, that walks you through 24 chapters on all different aspects of aging and longevity. You'll learn about nutrition, exercise, blood work and supplements. Get The Longevity Leap from Amazon. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click the like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. My name is Seem, stay optimized, stay empowered.